This is Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV, and we're here with Knut Orbeck Nielsen, CEO of Maritime DNBGL. And Knut, thank you very much for taking your time to join us today. Thank you very much for the invitation. Obviously, the role of big data in shipping has been a hot topic for for a long time now. Uh, but big data, in my experience, means a hundred different things to a hundred different people. Mm. Uh, can you give to me your definition of big data, but more importantly, a practical example of how big data is being used today to help make operations more efficient, more safe? Okay, so I think let, let me start by saying that uh, we've had data poverty for generations, meaning that we have not had enough data. We've, made, we've had to make do with limited data sets and then we make extrapolations and we try to make the best decisions out of what we have. So just to give you a very practical example, maybe the data set is not enormous, but when we are looking at overfleet, which mm -hmm. is nearly 13,000 vessels, mm -hmm. um, and we look at the port state control mm -hmm. statistics, and we see that there are uh, over-representation of certain vessel types, mm -hmm and certain items that are being inspected by the port state authorities. So by applying, say, data analytics on our fleet, we were able to pinpoint three different vessel types mm -hmm. that were more susceptible to port state detentions. Mm -hmm. And for those vessel types, we could drill down even further and look at, you know, what are the detainable items. Mm -hmm. So based on this, say, uh, data analytics, we could then produce um, a checklist of mm. the most uh, detainable mm. items for these vessel types that we could share with the ship managers and the ship owners. Mm. And I think that is just a very practical example of how we can utilize, say, big data okay. and analytics. Um, my second example would be to look at some of the say pilot project that we are doing with the customers mm. uh, as we speak where we are downloading operational data mm -hmm. from uh, a relatively advanced vessel. And by looking at this operational data, we are able to extract knowledge mm -hmm. about critical equipment on board. And for instance, we could find that for one specific piece of equipment, mm -hmm. the uh, temperature readings were really quite high at very regular intervals. Mm -hmm. Now, if this was allowed to continue, we would have an early breakdown mm -hmm. of that specific piece of machinery. And by applying that second set of glasses mm -hmm. that I talked about earlier, it's not only why things break down, but mm -hmm. it's what correlates with what. And that high temperature reading was really a result of too high friction okay. resulting from a crew member applying a too high torque okay. to that specific equipment. Mm -hmm. And these are the sort of data um, sets that you can look at and it will give you new knowledge and we could quite easily adjust the instructions for that crew member mm -hmm. so that he would apply the right torque, having the right friction, mm -hmm. avoiding the high temperature and the most likely early breakdown okay. of that equipment. So that are just two examples I, I find really very promising and gives a lot of potential for, for shipping going forward. And we talk about a down market as a time to invest. Mm. Where does the reality hit the road? Uh, what is going on? Do you see companies out there investing um, in the technologies that we've discussed? Yeah, I think we see both, actually. I mean, there are companies that are continuously investing in new insights, new technologies, mm -hmm. um, and which is makes a lot of sense these days mm -hmm. uh, because there is a lot of change going on, like mm -hmm. we talked about. Uh, and there are companies that are in survival mode mm -hmm. and will not have the ability or the capacity at the moment to really look into making investments. So... There is uh, both, I would say, and it, it has its natural reasons. But I think some of, some of those that are not able to, say, make a lot of investments at this point in time may still benefit from what the industry is doing. And let me just give you one example, and that's uh, how we have 
introduce drones for inspection uh, of uh, cargo holds in, in vessels. And I think this is, uh, say, an investment that we have made, mm -hmm. uh, but we are also making it, uh, say, accessible and available to the larger industry. And if you're a bulker uh, owner of a bulker vessel, you can uh, mm -hmm. you can benefit from that technology being developed. Mm -hmm. And I think that is the good thing. It's also some of the, I mean, our purpose is to safeguard life, property, and the environment. Mm -hmm. But when we are investing into future technologies and f future insights, mm -hmm. it's also our way of returning back to the industry some of the benefits of working with us over time. And I think just by using drones, the bulker owner can save time and money, and that makes sense these days as well. This is Craig Troutwine, Maritime Reporter TV, and again, we thank Newt Canute for sharing his time and his insights with us.